Hallelujah. Today, we have a journey to take before the Lord through his word. We'll be looking at beating bitterness for a better harvest. Beating bitterness for a better harvest. And we'll be talking about one of my favorite characters in the Bible. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite. A young man who understood the things of God in the ways of God. And God did a lot of wonders in his life. Anytime I read about this young man, read about his story, I get so much inspired. I get so much energized. I get so much encouraged. The book of Genesis breaks the story of our beginning and also addressed our foundational essentials. That's how the book of Genesis started. And we are in the book of Genesis today. We'll be coming to the book of Genesis. Life is full of storms. But God's word gives us unshakable stability. Life is full of storms. But God's word gives us unshakable stability. Bitterness does not build fortunes. It rather bulldozes and breaks them. Bitterness does not build fortunes. It rather bulldozes and breaks them. Tear them apart. Bitterness is a built-up poison that flows in the storms of those who do not have a genuine connection with the Savior. Let me read that again. Bitterness is a built-up poison that flows in the streams of those who do not have a connection, a genuine connection with the Savior. In other words, bitterness is a poisoned passion. Bitterness is a poisoned passion. We must understand that bitter people are not bad people. They are only a people who have suffered bad things. Let me repeat that. Bitter people are not bad people. They are people who have experienced bad things in life. So don't see a bitter person and conclude the person is bad. No. They are people who have suffered bad deals. There is no need to be bitter if you allow the Lord to be the builder of your life. If we allow God to build our lives, we will not be bitter in life at all. And God is actually building our lives. Bitterness must be treated as water under the bridge. If we have a revelation of the future. If you know why God would allow you to suffer that pain or engage in that challenge. If you can see the future of that thing, then you treat a bitter feeling, a bitter response as a water under the bridge. For whatever God allows to happen to us is for promotion, is for blessing, it is for lifting. People may fear the bitter streams they generated against us. But let us walk in freedom through the power of forgiveness. I love this statement. People who have hurt us may fear the bitter streams they, they generated themselves against us. But let us walk in freedom through the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness indeed is freedom. Bitterness is bondage. True freedom is when one becomes immune to bitterness. When we become immune to bitterness, then we are truly free. Then we can enjoy real, true freedom. Bitterness dismantles the intricately wired immune system and attracts all manner of diseases that destroys humanity and creation as a whole. A closer look at sin is a bag called bitterness. When you look closely at sin, 
It's like a bag, B-U-G, bag. Call bitterness. Bitterness is a bag. More dangerous than a virus or a bacterial. B bitterness is a bag. It's a bag that is more dangerous than a virus or a bacterial. Bitterness causes expo pandemic effects. We recently or recently in our lives, in the 21st century, the year 2020, we've been talking about a COVID-19 pandemic. But bitterness go beyond COVID-19. Bitterness is expo pandemic. If there's any word like that, it goes beyond pandemic. Bitterness is a carbonic. It sweeps away our glory. Bitterness is a carbonic. It sweeps away our glory. When we say something is Ichabod, it means that a glory has departed. Once we allow bitterness to take charge of our lives, once we give bitterness a room to rule in our lives, it erodes, it eradicates, it depreciates, it flats its when it depreciates the glory of God in the life of the believer. Bitterness is Ichabodic. When we allow bitterness will become like Ichabod. Genesis 50. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 22. Genesis chapter 50, 15 to 22. This is a story that closes the book of Genesis. And it's a story that will close in a phase of the history of Israel and bringing them to another phase. Israel under Jacob had now moved even to the land of Egypt where Joseph had been sold by his brethren to become a slave. They thought they could kill him, but the plan changed and God was behind it. He was sold not to any mere slave master, but sold to Potiphar. Potiphar was the captain of the army of Egypt who works and works closely with the king of, I mean, King Pharaoh of Egypt. Because God knew that Joseph had to be brought closer to the palace. So God arranged. God negotiated. God allowed all these things to happen to the young man, Joseph. Now Joseph's dream has been fulfilled. He was sold at the age of 17. He stayed in Egypt for 13 years. As a slave, as a servant, as someone that was treated with no respect. When he was 30 years, his dream began to come to pass. I'm here to announce to you that after many years, your dream is about to be fulfilled. Your calling is about to blossom. The things that God spoke about you is about to manifest. Yes, people may have looked down upon you. Yes, people may have hurt you in the course of your journey. Yes, people may have made you cry, suffer. People may have taken you through a great ordeal. But I'm here to announce to you that your manifestation is about to be launched. Your glory is about to hit. Your life is about to hit a glory pot. And everybody will see what God is doing. Now in verse 15, bitterness is a natural response to all natural men. The principle here is that bitterness is a natural response to all natural men. Jacob had died. Now the sons of, of Jacob were afraid of their brother Joseph. They thought now that their father as is dead, the one that they believed what they thought, Jacob, uh, uh, Joseph respects so much. Jacob respects his father so much, so they thought it was the reason why he could not respond in a bitter manner. Now he died. So his brothers thought, he was going to pay them back in, the, in their own coin. So they were afraid. So they had to go to Joseph in that fear. For them, for you to hurt anybody, you must be hurt in return. They believe in the law of Moses. And they believe that Joseph was going to damage them at this point. He had all the opportunity. He had all the, the, the powers. He had all the things he needed to just finish them. So they went to him. And they wanted to plead for their lives on the terms of forgetting about the pain. 
bitterness is a natural response to all men. That is why we are not just natural, but we are spiritual. And we must be spiritual indeed. If we allow the Spirit of God to take charge of our lives, the Spirit of God will overwhelm our humanity and reduce the weaknesses of our humanity and give us more strength in the place of our divinity. Hallelujah. In verse 16, bitterness becomes aggravated when we do not own up or accept our wrong full acts. There's something I want everybody to know, everybody to learn, everybody to understand. That bitterness becomes aggravated when we don't own up or accept our wrongful acts. They sent somebody. They didn't go themselves. They sent a messenger. What a disrespect to their brother, who is no longer a brother, but is more than a brother. He was the second in command of the land or in the land of Egypt. He was the number two after Pharaoh. They could have gone to him as their brother, but they sent a messenger. They should have gone by themselves. But they said someone. Their message was questionable. This is what they said. When our father was alive, our father commanded you, you, not to hurt us. Can you imagine? They lied in the process. They rather shifted the effect of their behavior towards their dead father. They had no remorse. They had no change of heart. They have no change of mind. What do you do? How do you respond to people who do not accept the fact that they have hurt you? What do you do? In some cases, they make you more bitter. But when it becomes spiritual and people do not accept the responsibility of the things they have done against you, leave them in the hands of God. Ask God for grace. Move on with your life and let God fill your heart with the joy of the Spirit. Those of you who have offended people you know, you have hurt people you know, you have troubled people you know, you have caused them pain you know, you know what you have done. The best thing to do in order to lower, to depreciate, to bring down the, the levels, the flames of their bitterness is to go and tell them to forgive you for what you have done. Go and own up. Go on up. Go and own up. Go and plead. Go and seek for forgiveness and you will bring down the level of bitterness in the hearts of people. Hallelujah. As I bring the part one of this message to an end, I want to challenge everybody who knows in your heart that you have caused pain, you have offended someone, you have actually troubled someone, you have actually, by the things you did, have brought discomfort, gross discomfort to someone, it is time to go and plead with the person. It is time to go in the spirit of Proverbs chapter 6. It says, go and save yourself from the hands of the hunter. Go and plead your cause and you shall be forgiven. May God bless you as you take this step to go ask for forgiveness and seek for mercy. May the Lord himself give you mercy and show you forgiveness. And those of us whom we know that people have offended us and they know it, but they're not willing to accept. They're not willing even to come clean. Let's behave like Joseph. Let it make it like a river, a water, under the bridge. And let God handle the rest of the matter. God bless you. I love you. Shamus in Gloria be. Bringing you the mega devotional breath daily. I'll see you again with the next message on this message that had to do with beating bitterness for a better harvest. You got to learn to beat bitterness for a better harvest. God bless you. And I love you. Amen.